anymore. Come on and worship. Don't let your worship die because the choir didn't stop singing. You don't need a choir to give God some worship. All you got to do is open up your mouth. Oh, God, you created an atmosphere for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to come in the building. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we swim this place of God. Oh, come on and give him your worship. church as usual, but I came here to create a move, a supernatural move of God, where there is a rush of his spirit, there is a rush of his glory, oh come on somebody, anybody walk, ready to walk heavy with me on tonight, we ready to walk heavy in the spirit realm, we ready to put some move on the devil, and say devil, this ain't what you want, come on somebody, oh come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, and worship, come on, come on, Oh, hallelujah. Anybody ready to bless the Lord in this atmosphere? Anybody come here expecting God to be supernatural in this atmosphere? Oh, God, we reverence you in this place. Oh, God, we honor you in this place. We say that you are King of Kings. We say that you are Lord of Lords. We say that you are the great I am. You are the way maker. Oh God, you are everything. And everything is yours. Oh, come on, come on. Come on and bless him in this place. Come on and bless him in this place. Come on and bless him in this place. We're creating an atmosphere for miracles. We're creating an atmosphere for signs. We're creating an atmosphere for wonders. Oh God, we... your way in this place. I say let me move out of the way, oh God, you do whatever you want to do, how you want to do it. I say anoint these hands, oh God, anoint this mouth, oh God, anoint my feet. Everything that I do in this place is going to be blessed and blessed indeed. Oh God, because your glory is upon me, your anointing is upon me. Oh God, let your glory fill this house like never before. I declare and I decree that Never before I speak a like never before anointing right now. I speak a like never before anointing in this place. A like never before anointing. A like never before anointing. God have your way. Oh God have your way. Have your way in the name of Jesus. Stay right there. Have your way in the name of Jesus. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Y'all flow with me on tonight. Because God is trying to do something. I don't like being up there. I'm a country girl. You want to look at me on this pedestal, but tonight I came here to talk to you right here where you at. I came here to meet you right here where you at. I came to prophesy to where you're going. Hallelujah. Anybody ready for a miracle on tonight? Anybody ready for a sign on tonight? Anybody ready for a wonder on tonight? Oh, hallelujah. See, see, y'all don't understand that for God to move in the way that you want him to move, there has to be a sound in the atmosphere. There has to be a sound in the atmosphere where God can come in and he can break up some fellow crown. Where God can is 
up to something big in this season. God is up to something big. I came in here to prophesy to what is going on in the atmosphere. I came in here to prophesy to what's going on in your now. I came here to prophesy on what God is about to do. Somebody say, God do it, God do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we finna tear some stuff up in here tonight. I came here to break up every form of religion, every form of tradition. I don't care. I'm I'm grateful for God. Hey, you wanna know? Don't let the hair fool you. Don't let the heels fool you. Don't let the dress fool you. Because when it comes to my God, I can get real radical with him. Every demon up in this place, I command you to let these people go in the name of Jesus. I declare it. force, every spirit of distraction, every hindering spirit, every generational curse, every spirit that is not like my God. I declare and decree that you are not welcome in this place. You cannot have rule and reign in this place. You cannot flow in this place. But only the Holy Ghost can flow. Only the Holy Ghost can move. Every demon in here, I command you to be in a position of cast out in the name of Jesus. Anybody want freedom in this place? Anybody want breakthrough in this place? Anybody want deliverance in this place? Anybody want a miracle in this place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we finna, we finna tap into another level, another realm of God's glory. We finna tap into another level, another realm of God's glory. See, see, we're in a season and a time where distractions are hindering the body of Christ like never before. We're in a season and a time where the devil is moving and he is distracting you in your mind. He's distracting you in your body. He's distracting you with your finances. He's distracting you in your marriages. He's distracting you in your health and your well-being. But I came in here to tell a Never boy pie on today. Anybody got a boy pie in that spirit? See, devil, you had me last year. You messed with my marriage last year. You messed with my finances last year. I don't know who I'm talking about right now, but somebody need to give the devil a boy pie and say, not this year, devil. Not this year. Not this year. Because it is my year. It is my year of breakthrough. It is my year of harvest. flow with me on tonight. See, this is your year. Let me tell y'all a secret. I'm going to tell y'all something. At my church, I prophesied on December 31st. Was it Sean Drinker? I prophesied that, that we were in a season of breakthrough. We are in a season of harvest. We are in a season of supernatural manifestations. And I said that a sign of that would be a new moon that was coming. I didn't know how the new moon was coming, but I said a new moon is coming on December 31st. I said, God said, as a sign to his children, that a harvest is at hand. There's a new moon that is going to hit me. How many of you know within a week later, two weeks later, we saw on CNN, guess what? A new moon is coming. Oh, hallelujah. See that shouting right there. That's something to shout about. See, because God said, sign your breakthrough is a sign that a new moon was coming. CNN called it a blue moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if y'all remember that. But CNN called it a blue moon. Two weeks before the word was prophesied. The word was prophesied. That God said we're in a season of harvest. We're in a season of breakthrough. We're in a season of deliverance. We're in a season of promotion and elevation. And your sign was going to be the new moon. CNN wasn't in the house of God, but they were just doing what they were supposed to do. They were, supposed, they were just reporting the news to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, God said, tell them, remind them that that word was prophesied. Tell them, remind them that they're in a new season of harvest. They're in a new season of breakthrough. Remind them of where they're going. Remind them. Because right now in somebody's house right now, you got distractions left and right. Right now in somebody's finances, you got distractions left and right. Right now in somebody's body, you got distractions left and right. The doctor that told you one thing, and now your mind wondering. But God, didn't you tell me? God, didn't you tell me? God, didn't you tell me? You said this is a season of breakthrough. You said this is a season of harvest. He said, yeah, I told Joseph he was going to the palace too, but he didn't know he would get into the pit before he got there. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, see, you got to see that thing before you see it. You got to see that thing before you see it. If God said it, you better believe that by God.
finally he gonna manifest that thing. He didn't tell you that you were gonna have to go to a low place before he could bring you to a high. So if you got distractions in this hour, if you got things coming at you left and right, if things are not going the way you want, you better tell the devil boy bye. Say, devil, I ain't got time for you in this season. I ain't got time to mess with you in this season because God didn't make me some promises. And God's promises are so yes and amen. God's promises are yes and amen. Do y'all believe that on tonight? That God's promises are yes and amen. It don't matter what it looks like. It don't matter what it sounds like. season of harvest. See, see, somebody need to take that and run with it because somebody is believing for elevation. Somebody is believing for promotion. Somebody is believing for some type of increase. Somebody is, believe, is believing God for good health. Somebody is believing God for wealth. Somebody is believing God for somebody else. Oh, come on, somebody. But if you allow the distractions that are coming left and right to snatch up this word, you will miss God. Somebody need to say, I can't miss God in this season. I can't miss God. I can't miss God. I declare and decree, I can't miss God in this season. I can't miss him. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm fixing to come to somebody's house. I'm looking for some Nehemiahs in this building. See, God gave me a word about Nehemiah on tonight. I'm finna speak to all the Nehemiahs that's in this house. The Nehemiahs that are on the wall that's trying to be something that's trying to build up your faith that's trying to build up your strength that's trying to build up your finances that's trying to build up your family you just a Nehemiah right now you working and you toiling and you're like okay God I'm on the wall I'm on the wall I'm on the wall where it's my harvest I'm on the wall where it's my breakthrough I'm on the wall oh God where is it where is it God I can't see it you're gonna have to open up my eyes oh God cuz I can't see it right now open up Nehemiah's. See, let me tell you a story about Nehemiah. I got no but I'm all flowing. See, see, let me tell you, anybody know the story of Nehemiah? Let me tell you, Nehemiah had, had heard. Somebody said, had heard. He got a word. And word was, Nehemiah, Jerusalem, the wall has been burned down. Nehemiah the wall is in, the, is in destruction Nehemiah something is going on and Nehemiah once he heard that the wall was broken that the wall was destroyed Nehemiah got a little distraught in his spirit anybody promise that got broken anybody had something in your life that didn't go through like the way you wanted it to Nehemiah listen now the wall was in Jerusalem guess what Jerusalem is Jerusalem is the promised land somebody say promised land with Nehemiah's promise. How many of you know that because Nehemiah's promise got messed with, Nehemiah got a little distraught in his spirit. Nehemiah was a little flabbergasted. Nehemiah was like, hey God, I don't know about this thing right now. Nehemiah began to begin to mourn it. And the board says that Nehemiah began to go before the king. Anybody know that the king is the Lord? The king is God. But we're going to stick with the script. Nehemiah goes before the king. I mean, he goes before God. And he said, God, now king, I got a situation going on in my promised land. I got a situation going on in my promised land. What's your promised land? Is it your finances? Is it your health? Is it your mindset? Is it your well-being? Is it... A relationship. See, Nehemiah had something going on in his promised land. Come on, somebody. And so he goes before the king. I mean, he goes before God. And he said, now, God, I got an issue in the tissue. I got some junk in the trunk. And I need your help, oh God. I need your help. I need your help. I need some. Something's got to happen. Something's got to change. Something's got to shift in my, my atmosphere. Anybody had a moment where you went, oh God, God something got to shift? Because the devil messing with my promise. The devil messing with my children. The devil messing with my spouse. The devil messing with my money. 
Oh God, I need a ship right now. Anybody need a ship in their life right now? See, come on, come on. I know I'm in the building. You ain't got to tell me your business. But I know I got some Nehemiahs in here where your promised land been messed with. All right, yeah. So Nehemiah goes before the king. He goes before God. And he's like, look, something didn't happen with my promise. Something ain't right. Something is wrong. I need your help, king. I need some favor. Everybody need some favor from the king. Nehemiah was bold enough to go before the king and he said, King, I need some favor. I need some favor right now. I need some favor. And the king looked at Nehemiah. He said, you got it. Whatever you want, you got it. Whatever you need, you got it. But he didn't know that once the king said, you got it, that that meant he was going to get to it, but you got to work for it. You got to go put it to work. Whatever I Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, Nehemiah goes before the king. He goes before God and he said, God, I got an issue. I need some help. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got favor too. I'm going to give you this, but you got to work in in the process. So Nehemiah said, okay, I got this. I got this. I got this. And so Nehemiah goes to work, y'all. Y'all walking with me. Y'all strolling with me. Nehemiah goes to work. And he begins to take what God gave him And he began to put in the work He began to build up a wall He began to tear He began to tear it What is your work that you're putting in in this season And it feels like you just building And you just building And you just building Nehemiah Got the favor And then once he got the favor He got the work and he had some people that was on his side that helped him work. But guess what? While he was in the middle of working, while he was in the building of, uh, in, in, in the midst of building, that, that was destroyed. While he was in the midst of building, that, that was messed with by the devil. While he was doing that, there was a word that went in the atmosphere. A man called Sam Ballard. And Sam Ballard was like, who he think he is? Who they think? they is over there building a wall who they think they is trying to resurrect the promise who they think they is thinking their marriage is going to be restored who they think they is thinking that father is going to be blessed and highly favored who do they think they is thinking they children ain't going to have to go through nothing who do they think they is there was a sound that was released into the atmosphere and there were some haters and there were some instigators. While Nehemiah was building, while he was struggling, he began to build, he began to work, he began to toil. And then the man, they, they began to talk about Nehemiah. They began to do all of these things to discombobulate him. But Nehemiah kept building. I'm, I'm here to tell y'all, tonight somebody need to keep building. And, and listen, listen, listen. It might, need, it might be your faith that you need to keep building. It might need to be your faith. Let up in this setup. I can't quit now. I can't give up now. I ain't there yet, God. I still got goals that I haven't achieved. But I'm building up my faith. I'm building up my confidence. Somebody in here got no self esteem. You need to build up your self esteem. You need to build yourself up and know that if God said it, that's it. If He made your promise, that's it. What is your promised land that you need to be building on right now? Is it your self-esteem? Is it your health and your well-being? Get away from that fried chicken and the pork chops. And what is it that you need to be building right now? What is it? What is it? Because the king said you got favor. But if you don't work on that thing, if you don't build that thing, that wall will come down. And you're going to be like, well, what had happened was? No, what had happened was I showed you that you had favor. But you couldn't put it work to build the wall now y'all get this y'all get this Nehemiah was in the midst of building up his faith he was in the midst of building up his promise he was in the midst of building up what God had told him and then all of a sudden y'all get this all of a sudden he's building and he's building and people talking about him and then the Bible says that they came to him not one time, not two times, but they came to him four times. It said, Nehemiah, come down, I need to talk to you. Come down, I need to talk to you, Nehemiah.
you. I get out and walk. I need to talk to you. There are people that are sent to you in this season that are called to distract you.
look at your health and your well-being. How can you improve that? God is saying, I give you access. What are you going to do with it? Why are you coming out the wall with me? Why is not the time and season? is serious. If y'all think the devil is trying to keep still and destroy everything your hands touch because the devil heard the prophetic word. He heard that this is a season of harvest. He heard that this is a season of breakthrough. If you think he's going to pass it to you, be like, here you go. It's like, no. This is the season of spiritual warfare like never before. If you are, you are in two seasons. You're in a season of harvest, but you're also in a season of warfare at the same time. Meaning you're going to fight for what's rightfully yours. Meaning you're going to have to go to war for what's rightfully yours. You're going to have to go to war for your mind. You're going to have to go to war for your health. You're going to have to go to war for your family. Because God didn't make you some promises, but Nehemiah, if you get off the wall too soon. Nehemiah, Nehemiah said, should a man like me come down off this wall? Should a man like me? But I got a question for you. Should a man like you? Should a woman like you? Who are you? Who exactly are you in this season, time, and hour? Who are you? What are you doing? What are you working with? What are you giving God to work with? Should a man like me come down? Should a man like me come down? Should a man like me come down? I need you to ask yourself, should a man like me? Just because daddy did don't mean you got to do it. Just because mama did it don't mean you got to do it. Just because they had an it is what it is attitude don't mean you got to have it. I dare you to break generational curses off your life. I dare you to break every demon that's been chasing after you. Chasing after your mind. I dare you to break that thing. You better shake yourself loose. We're in a season of harvest. But we're in a season of warfare like never before. So watch this. Nehemiah is building because his promise just got messed with. He's building, right? What is your promise? What is my promise? See, sometimes well, I can give you a word like that. It be good and make it sound so good. Nehemiah is building and he's building and he's building and now he didn't back to the top. Everything is in place. I need to close the door on securities. I need to close the door on folk. Call somebody. I need to close the door on my attitude. Come on, come on, tell yourself. Boy, you wreck yourself. You want another level, but you can't bless it. You want another level, you can't. Because you're messing with your own destiny now. Because you're building all you didn't got it to where it needs to be. But you forgot to close the door. You forgot to leave me well enough alone. See, see, see. When God delivered you from women. When God delivered you from men. You got to delete some numbers. When God delivered you from friends. Delete them numbers. When God delivered you from the club. Stop going. Oh, well, well, I, I can pray for people. In Baby, you ain't praying for nobody. For yourself. When you, when you caught up in the middle of a situation, everybody cussing, everybody drinking, everybody smoking, what are you going to do? Did you close the door? Well, I mean, I mean, I'm just, everybody, we just all chilling, so I mean, I just ain't like going back to that for me. Now, don't you, Aya? God didn't make you some promises, but if you don't close the door, you're going to miss it in this season. You're going to miss it in this season. God is saying, where are my Nehemiahs that are not afraid to rise up? Where are my Nehemiahs that are not afraid to do what I told them to do? Well, God, I don't feel like I got enough, so 
support. Where are my Nehemiahs that will do it scared and all? Where are my Nehemiahs that will do it broken all? Where are my Nehemiahs that will do it just to do it because God said to it? God said, Nehemiah, I'm challenging your faith in this season. Do you really trust me? Do you really trust me? I don't seek to see God is you. The doctor says, but do you really trust me? I, I, I want to go be with that because I have been a home that's been great. I'm six miscarriages. One, one, the first praise I'm going to suit my life out. The day where God was like, do you really trust me? Really the next level. Do you really think that you can handle the babies that I showed you years ago? But I, I, I told me I had this. But God, I mean, it is what it is. And I just got to accept it. No, 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 Nehemiah. Are you building your faith? Where are my Nehemiah? They're building their faith outside of what folks say. Are you worried about what folks say? Or are you worried about what God say? But God, they told me I'm not really qualified, so I can't apply for this job. So, 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 Nehemiah, you gonna come off the wall? Are you gonna keep building? Nehemiah, just because your mama and them got a divorce, does that mean you gonna get a divorce? Just because they got stuck with cancer, does that mean you gotta get stuck with cancer? Nehemiah, where's your faith? Nehemiah, see, 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 this is what Nehemiah gotta do. Nehemiah got a club come down. Nehemiah, and I need you to go get a dough, pretty dough, ugly dough, it don't matter. Get you a dough, Nehemiah. Close the door to cancer. Close the door to lying. Yeah. Close the door to cheating. Yeah. Close the door to fornicating. Close the door to your attitude. Close the door to drinking. Close the door to smoking. Close the door to not thinking you good enough. Close the door to not thinking you worthy enough. Yeah. See, see, those are some doors that we need to close. Close the door to be like God that lets you run. That ain't your, your husband. He ain't not now look a save. And then when you get married to him, you're gonna be like, well, God saved him. No, I showed you who he was before you married him. Me and Maya, what you thinking? But, but you thought just because you put a he put a ring on it, he was gonna change? Nehemiah, where's your faith to believe that I will send you the real deal, holy field, but you're falling for the counterfeits. But God, I mean, I just got a little hot and bothered. Yeah, yeah, you sure did. Because that wasn't God, that was you. But then we go back to God, God save him. God like, no, you get yourself delivered. Where are the Nehemiahs? Where they at? Where are the Nehemiahs that don't mind standing up for me? Don't mind standing up for their children. Don't mind standing up for their destiny. Don't mind standing up for the next level. Nehemiah, you're not called to get off the wall. It takes work to build it. It takes work to build it. It takes work. That's all God is looking for. He's looking for somebody that he can put a talent in their hands. Nehemiah, if I give you one talent, Nehemiah, what you going to do? If I give you two talents, Nehemiah, what you going to do? Are you going to put it in the ground and be like, well, what happened was I, I just didn't know what to do with it. I don't know. You're supposed to build upon that. You're supposed to build upon it. Why are y'all sleeping? It's too many, many need of my sleeping on God. And then God, we look at the next person, well, God, how you blessing them? Because they took what I gave them and they put it to work. They took the little bit of faith, that must have seen faith that I gave them, and they put it to work. And it sprung up a tree. What kind of tree brings up? A must have seen brings up a what, an oak tree? And they put it to work. Like, put your faith to work. Put your faith to work, Nehemiah. 
Can you see it before you see it? Because that's where you're going to see it. God is saying, I got something so profound for you in this season. A sudden wind of favor, a sudden wind of breakthrough, a sudden wind of creative ideas. Listen, when God told me this year, the other day, He said, I'm about to download creative ideas like never before that will produce millions. Come on, somebody. I'm about to download creative ideas that will produce millions. He said, but I'm going to give it to the people. Many are called to get these ideas, but few will be chosen to run with it. Listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. He said, many are called to get the ideas, but few will be chosen to run with it. Why? Because they don't have the faith to build upon the idea. It's just a thought. It's just a thought. But God said, no, that thought was going to produce you millions. But Nehemiah couldn't build. God said, I'm releasing ideas. Listen to me. I was in meditation, working on something new that God was giving me. And in the middle of the meditation, God downloaded an idea that was so profound. I said, my God. He said, this is just the beginning. He said, tell them that I'm about to download things in the spirit. And the only thing that's going to hinder them is them. The only thing that's going to hinder them is that spirit of fear. That is going to set you back from not moving on the water like God told them. Millionaire ideas. But God, I'm just from Camden. Oh God, I'm just from, just from Grow Hill. I'm from, I'm from Jackson. I was in a little town called Todd Ta- Ta- Town. It's connected to Jackson, Alabama. I went to school in Grove Hill. And I used to have that mentality. Well, God, I, I mean, I'm just from Jackson. How? But God said, listen to me. Listen to me. Y'all take this and run with it. God said, I'm about to bless your hands like never before. I'm about to pour in favor like never before. But he's looking for Nehemiah's. That want to build upon the ideas and not come off the wall from the ideas. You got to be scared enough to do what God's telling you to do. You got to do it knee shaking, teeth shattering and all. You don't even know how it's going to get done. You just know God said to do it. Listen, God is not a respect persons. He is ready to release things in the atmosphere like never before. There is a release. There is a release. There is a release. Woman of God, there is a release. The anointing and the fire of God. God said, You have found favor in His sight. And in the next 30 days, He is going to put something in your belly that is going to scare you. And I, and I say scared. See, y'all got to understand there, there's a good fear and there's a bad fear. A good fear will make you go forth in what God told you to do. A bad fear will make you sit down on it. But God said, within the next 30 days, I'm about to 
download something in your spirit. It's particular to business. A bright idea. Something that you're going to become a part of. I don't even know what you're doing right now. But God said there is a supernatural release for entrepreneurship on your life. I see restoration to your home. God said he's building something. He is building something. And it may not look like it right now. For you're in a season almost like confusion. You got some confusion here, a little frustration there. But God said, I'm building something. And I need you to see past it. Because when you come out of this, your hands are anointed. Listen to me. Your hands are anointed to do some work for the Lord. And these hands are entrepreneur hands. These hands, there's creativity in these hands. I prophesy this to I was in Grove Hill, Natasha Burris. And I didn't know. I just said, I see something in your hands. That your hands are blessed, your hands are anointed. And you're going to do something with your hands that is going to be in something with entrepreneurship. is something that God is about to do in your hands. I don't know, months later, six months, I can't even remember, maybe a year, she opened up a store. Did she open up a store? Did she have to have that store? She opened up a store selling whatnots. And, and I posted on her thing. I said, it's good to see the word of God being made manifest. Listen, when I tell you there is an anointing on your life to go forward, you got too much fear holding you back. So I command the spirit of fear to loose itself up for you. Doubt and hesitation or low self-esteem. See, what you've been through in the past is only supposed to build you up, not tear you down. It was to make you, not to break you. God said, use that as fire to go forth and pursue destiny. He said, use that as fire to go forth and do what he called you to do. You got wealthy hands, but until you believe it, you'll never receive it. Come on and bless the Lord for that. Come on and bless the Lord. Because your place in the atmosphere. Have you written a book yet, Quita? Did I say that something about that last time? Stop singing on God. Because there is a time period. Listen to what I'm saying. There is a time period of expectation of what God is releasing you to do. The book, I see the business, the school, I see all all of that. God said, where you're at right now is just the beginning of where he's trying to take you. But you gotta be careful because he took you from Egypt to a land of Canaan, meaning prosperity and increase. If you're not careful, I preach this on Sunday, that Canaan becomes Egypt because you become stagnant in that. And you become comfortable in that. And this is just what it is. And then you stay in that. But God said there is more. Until you believe it, until you start really moving and tapping into it, you'll never receive it. There is a time period there's a window that God is saying is open for you for you to embark on this journey that he's called you to you are called to be the head and not the tail above and not beneath where you're at right now is not where you're supposed to be it's just a little of where God is trying to take you you are a difference maker you are a catalyst to this region but you gotta understand that you are called to be at this place I see you almost like a you don't understand that there are so many women that are licking you. They're also very jealous of you. They're very jealous of you. I see a hoovering spirit of jealousy around you. Even people that smile in your face every day. Be very careful because I see wolves in sheep's clothing. But God is saying, now look, they ain't seen nothing yet. If you do what I tell you to do, says the Lord, they're going to see you sitting so high on top of the mountain. Eating grapes while they're sitting there looking at her like, well, why she do? Let me tell you something. It's just the beginning. God has put so much in your belly that until you begin to walk this thing, you're in a season where you are called to walk on the water. You are, you have got to walk on the water, and you gotta try this thing. Listen to what I'm saying. It's gonna start out almost like a mentoring. It's gonna start out into like this mentoring program, and it's gonna build into almost like this school. It's like, but you, but you gotta start somewhere.
because I see the school as the end picture, but this mentoring with girls and doing different things after school programs and, and all of this. And you're like, well, I got my kids. I just got to go home. I got to cook. I ain't got time for all that. But God said, this is the season for you to begin to walk on the water and begin to produce that I have called you to. Wealthy hands. That's what you have. You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. The book. The programs, the school, it's all a part of destiny. Don't miss God. Because there is a window. I spoke this two years ago. There is a window. Okay? There is a window of opportunity. You're not called to bleed. You're called to stand out. You've always that calling to stand out on you. Stop blending. You're getting too comfortable and it's turning into Canaan is turning into Egypt. Hallelujah. Come on and bless the Lord. Come on, Mr. Come on and bless the Lord. There is a release. There is a release. There is a release of harvest. There is a release of harvest. I see somebody's child that's in jail. God said there is some favor that is about to hit. I don't know who this is. I, maybe somebody you know. I see some favor about to hit somebody that's in the jail right now. In the name of Jesus. And they're going to be released. They're going to be released, says the Lord. They're going to be released. Is that you in the back? Somebody raise their hand. Is that you? What's that woman? Right here. Is that you? Come here, let me pray for you. Is it your boyfriend? Is somebody you know? Come on, come on, come on. Because see, there is an anointing in here to set people free. There is an anointing in here for another level. There's anointing in here for breakthrough. There is an anointing in here. So come on and stand in the gap for this person. Hallelujah. Do you believe the word of the Lord on tonight? What's his name? Hallelujah. If I be a prophet of God, there is a favor that is about to hit Mitchell like never before. And soon and very soon, you will receive a word that they're letting me go. Soon and very soon. This is what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Because of the favor that is in this atmosphere, because of the voice that is being releasing the words in this atmosphere, if you believe a prophet, then you shall reap a prophet's reward. And that is exactly what is ministered to you. So, Mitchell, right now in the name of Jesus, I see the shackles are broken off of your feet. I speak that there is freedom all over you right now. I speak that you have found favor. In the Lord, I speak that soon and very soon that the door will be open for you to come out, for you to come out of the doors. And I speak that when Mitchell comes out of the doors, he gonna be safe for real. He gonna be in the house of the Lord. He gonna love on the Lord. He gonna praise Him. He's gonna worship Him, and he's gonna know that this is what God has done for me. You release this word to Mitchell that as surely as he get out, he said the Lord is gonna be looking for you, Mitchell. The Lord is gonna be looking for your praise. Worship. For there is a call on Mitchell's life. Mitchell is the one that has been running from God, brought up in the church. But Mitchell has been running. But I declare and decree that Mitchell will find his right place in the house of the Lord, that he will serve him, that he will honor him, and he will do everything he needs to do to bring glory to the Lord. This message is all about God's glory. For when it happens, you remind Mitchell of what the Spirit of the Lord has spoken to him on this day. And you remind Mitchell that there is an expectation that God is looking for him for his praise, for his worship, and for him to be the man that God has called him to be. And not the man that his daddy used to be. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord because there is a turnaround in the atmosphere. There is a We're shaking up the heavenly right now. We're shaking up the heavenly right now. Are you married, woman of God? Are you married? The voice has a word of the name. 
do with him or anything to do with the one that's coming. But he said, don't even worry about it. Because in due time, in due season, you're going to reap everything that yours. And this time, it's going to be blessed. Listen. It's going to happen. So I don't know if it's him or the new one or whatever. So, so it's got to be the new one up and coming. Like, where, where God, where you going to find me? Okay, just whatever was ministered to you a little bit ago, I don't remember everything. You focus on that. And while you focus on that, he going to find you. Okay. Hallelujah. Come on and bless him. Come on and bless the Lord. Come on and bless him. There is a Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a sound. A harvest. Something right there. Anybody need a healing? There is an anointing for healing. I'm about to show Monday. I got a very long weekend this weekend. So I'm going to move out of the way. But, but there is an anointing in here for healing and deliverance. I gotta preach again on tomorrow. Y'all pray my strength in the Lord. I own a boutique. I got a fashion show in the morning. But while I am here, while I am doing the work of the Lord, if there be anybody that needs a healing in their body, physically or mentally, come on, come on, come on. Cause I told y'all I'm finna move out. I don't, I don't do long hours across. Either you want it or you don't. Cause honey, we gonna bust a move on up out of here. I'm a little hood, so y'all just flow with me. Who needs a healing? Can I get some oil? Because God is about to do something to bless the body of Christ. There isn't an anointing. Y'all flow with me. Y'all hang on. I know y'all about to hire, but I'm going to get y'all out of here. But I got to stay in the vein of God and what God wants, right? Amen? So while y'all in your seat, I need y'all praying. I need y'all praying. I got some oil. Okay, give me some oil. Because we're gonna anoint you. Y'all, y'all, y'all line up this way. Facing me. Your faith is already done. Your faith, your faith, your faith is already done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, y'all, shift with me. Chandra, go get my oil out of the car. Let's do a quick work. Do a quick work, do a quick work, do a quick work. We're going to set the atmosphere for the anointing of God, the power of God, the blessings of God. Hallelujah. Come on and bless him. Come on and bless him. Come on and bless him. Release your worship in here. Okay, he didn't give me some more. Hallelujah. Call this for me. We're going to call this our blessing oil. See, I was about to say, anybody, y'all got a kitchen back there. Give me some Frisco. Give me some olive oil. Because let me tell y'all something. Oil, it just, I just need oil to symbolize the Holy Ghost. When I was trying to get demons out, out, out of somebody's house, they ain't had no oil. You know what I use, woman of God? Oil. I said, just give me some oil because all I need is a symbolism of the Holy Ghost. I don't need no anointing with the Jubilee and the fragrances, and I, I just need oil. That's all I need. I just need something to symbolize the Holy Ghost. So, we're gonna anoint you to symbolize the Holy Spirit on your life and the healing of God. This is barely coming out. Now I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna put a whole bunch, but I do at least want to see it, see the anointing. Hallelujah. Put some more. She said, "Put some more." Jesus, yes, yes, yes. Let's put some more. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
y'all good? Hallelujah. Now y'all praying in your sheets? Because this ain't no show, okay? This is ministry. Amen. So, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. Let me get somebody to... Yeah. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for the anointing to heal. I speak that the hands of Jehovah Rapha are touching her right now in the name of Jesus. From the top of her head to the very soles of her feet. Healing and breakthrough is yours. Healing and breakthrough. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praise God. And there is a peace that is about to come over you because you've been worried. God said, I'm about to give you a peace that surpasses all your understanding. The peace that only I can give. Because you've been worried out. And he said, bring it to your help. God said, it is well. Do you have the faith to believe that it is well? In this moment, in this season, in this hour. Recovery is your portion. You're in recovery. Believe that by faith. Your body is being made whole. Jehovah Rapha is touching you right now. As I lay hands on you, I lay hands. Every demonic force that has attacked her, I command you to lose yourself now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Power. In the name of Jesus. Breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You're battling generational curses. Yeah, yeah. See your bloodline. There are demons that are on assignment to mess with you, to hinder you, to frustrate you. But God is saying, daughter, be made whole. Be made whole right now in the name of Jesus. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. Oh, my son. There is still a greater wonderful work for you to do the Lord said I don't know if you're on the intercessory team or not but I see you in a, as a, a warrior of prayer like in the spirit realm God said go to another level in your warfare of praying go to another level go to another level and your prayers are going to bring forth your own healing as you pray and intercede for others, he said, you're going to see a manifestation of your own healing in the name of Jesus. For you still have a great and marvelous work to do, woman of God. The power that is in your mouth needs to be released, says the Lord. Great and marvelous work to do. The enemy is out to close your mouth. You're battling religious demons and you're, you're dealing with warfare on so many different levels. And this sickness, this thing that's coming over you is an attack, is a distraction. Because I see troubled waters. And this is witchcraft. You are surrounded by witchcraft. I don't know who it is, but, but, but what is on you is a witchcraft. Spirit, Jezebel, control, manipulation, deception. Be careful of the people that you are around because this that's attacking you is all coming from that. God said there needs to be a breaking away of you for, for you in this season because your mouth is trying to be closed. And there are many people that say they with you and they support you they don't support you you this message was for you nehemiah because you still need to be on the wall you still need to be building you still need to be doing what god told you to do that's witchcraft lord i break every assignment of the enemy in the name of jesus surround her with your love your grace your mercy your peace heal her deliver her set her free god said in due time i'm gonna reveal every one of them to you thank you oh god for the healing right now in the name of Jesus the breakthrough thank you for the supernatural manifestation thank you for delivering her oh God thank you oh God thank you oh God God is calling you to another level of praise your praise is your your praise
praises for somebody else. I see a divine intercession for someone. It looks like a man figure, boy figure. I don't know who it is, what it is, but I see great intercession for them. So much so that it's, it's almost like the attack that you're feeling is coming from that because you're having to war for them. You're having to pray for them. You're having to struggle for them. You're having to sacrifice for them that is messing with you. But I cover you with the blood of Jesus and I declare and decree that no demonic force, no witch, no warlock can have you. I declare and decree wholeness. I declare and decree healing. I declare and decree deliverance. I declare and decree breakthrough. That as you walk for them, that you won't be attacked in the middle of it. I speak a hedge of protection around you. That God's grace will cover and consume you like never before. That don't mean you gotta stop warring for them. That just means that you're covered. Amen? Make sure you cover yourself. Because whomever this is, they got a lot of demons that's out to get them, to keep them, to hinder them, to destroy them. And so what's happening is because you're praying for them, now they want to attack you. You got to make sure you cover yourself while you're covering them. War 